The journey towards three back-to-back -back World Cups for South Africa has begun. The three-peat is what Rassi Erasmus has his eyes on and he has named 43 men that will get together for the alignment camp, is what it's been called. That will be in Cape Town in a couple of weeks' time. 43 men, which will exclude the guys who are based in the UK, in Ireland, France and Japan, except for a couple of players, which I'll explain as we go through the squad. I'm also going to give you the details on my trip to South Africa later this year, which I'm very excited about. Um, and I need a bit of local knowledge on that one. So, But whatever the case, if you get value from the channel, if you enjoy it, please hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And more importantly, leave your comments on, um, on, on, on this new squad. Yeah, get stuck in. First place to start is the new coaches that Rassi Erasmus has announced. And I've done a video on this with a bit more depth. So go and check that out in the feed. But they will get together with the squad. Jerry Flannery who looks like he's going to look after the defensive side of things. Tony Brown will mastermind the attack. And Dwayne Vermeulen, part of the Moby unit. I mean, he is a unit. Part of the Moby unit, which means he basically just goes wherever Rassi Erasmus needs and will be a, a, in and amongst the provinces, making sure players are getting the messages that the, the, the senior uh, coaching team want them to get. Uh, Lucid Prop and Ox and Che. There's no one better at bending over and pushing than him in world rugby is there um absolute hero during the rugby world cup and south africa never have any trouble producing giant human beings who can bend over and push and ox and chase back up at the sharks and now for the spring box potentially mchunu who is i mean yeah he's a big boy but you may have seen i mean i i popped into my head there's a couple of tries he scored from about 50 meters the boy can shift and at 24 years of age, has one cap to his name against Wales in 2022. And talking to big men who can move, Gerhard Steenkamp. Six foot five, is he? 130 kegs? Big unit. And he, he's a baller. He can play. They've got some options. And with Stephen Kitsoff, obviously he'll come back into the mix, playing at Ulster currently, so not in this alignment camp. They're going to be all right. Tight head prop, same goes. Two double World Cup winners in Vincent Koch in France, Mullerba. Neithling Fouchier is the backup for Franz Malherbe at the Stormers and looking uh, to, um, fair play to him, 31 years of age, bit of a late bloomer by propping standards. He's had a great couple of years. And by the way, I hope I got that pronunciation right. I'm trying my best with the pronunciations. It's um, it's not something I'm uh, particularly natural at, but mainly because I don't know any better. So feel free to help me out in the comments <laughs> with any pronunciations. Vilko Lowe. I remember him from Harlequins, Quadzilla. What a pair of legs that man has got on him. And uh, tight head prop options are looking all right for South Africa, especially with Trevor Neocane uh, playing in France, but rumoured to be coming back to South Africa. And this guy is a unicorn in prop in terms because he can go on both sides of the scrum. That enabled South Africa to travel to the World Cup with only five props, not six, which was the case for most international teams. So to get the, the squeeze every last bit of juice out of the lemon with Tri as far as Trevor Neocane is concerned. I can understand him coming back to South Africa because they'll, they'll be able to manage his game time in a way that you just can't when you play in the meat grinder of the top 14 in France. Hooker. And you cannot imagine really anyone's going to oust Malcolm Marks and Bongi and Banambi from the, the match day squads when it comes to the big test matches. This is really a battle with four newer faces. It's a battle for who's going to be the backup to those guys. Um, that's if Razi Erasmus wants to take a third hooker. Doesn't need to normally, does he? Doesn't bother. Just convert some uh, some flankers, some loose forwards to, to to hooker as well. But if there was a third hooker spot, who's going to get it? Well, it's going to be from, you'd imagine, Johan Grobelar, who started for the Bulls at the weekend, 26 years of age. Real solid, solid hooker. Andre Hugo Venter, who's at the Stormers, he's got a kind of back row body type. He, he could do that job in, in the back row and, uh, and at hooker, you think, long term. Young guy, 22. Uh, you've got Manus van der Merwe, the only player from the Cheetahs. He's 26. And the one I'm really most excited about, Jan Hendrik Vessels. He's behind Grobelaar on the bench for the Bulls currently. But is his ceiling higher? I think it might be. 22 years of age. He's got a kind of Malcolm Marks body type, six foot four, 120 kgs. I don't know if I'm just going off. I, 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 I haven't watched all of the rugby in South Africa, so maybe I'm going off highlights. And, and Jan Hendrik Vessels is the kind of guy that has great highlights. Am I going off that too much? Or am I right in saying I think he's the one that you think 
has the highest ceiling out of the the newer faces at hooker let me know in the comments down below but they've got some great options into the second row where ebonet sabeth obviously uh, is going to be there salman morat he feels like his time now 25 years of age captain for the stormers coming back from injury was on the bench at the weekend looks to be a real talent but if there is going to be a second row that breaks through Ruan Nortier is, is going to have something to say about that rangy runner from the Bulls and so is Ruben Van Heerden who I remember from Exeter Chiefs where he was looking very good now back in South Africa and in the international mix but it's going to be a good player that makes the breakthrough because look at the talent they've got Franco Moster he's 33 now but still an amazing player playing in Japan uh, the two guys at Munster in Klein and Snayman Marvin Ori who would have been available but has been left out so it looks like, you know, one of the younger guys is looking to take his spot, you'd feel. Lou Diaga is 31. He's back from a horrible run of injuries. Really bad luck for him. For, missed the World Cup. But he's back playing in Japan and looking good, by all accounts. So don't be surprised to see him back in the mix as well. What, what ridiculous options they've got. Into the back row. And again, just like props, South Africa just seems to be able to just produce loose forwards by the gallon it's unreal you know that scene in lord of the rings where where like the the orcs just come out of the ground just get pulled out of a sack in the ground i, th I think that's how south africa make their back rows just like yeah there's another one there's another one it's crazy uh marco van staden and quagga smith great great players world cup winners both is it going to be quagga smith time to take the number eight jersey will he be starting for south africa will he bring that that violence in the best possible way from the start rather than as an impact player the, the best of impact players. We'll wait and see. Interesting one to watch that, isn't there? It was always. It seemed to be the thought for the last couple of years that Evan Ruiz was going to be the guy that would take that number eight jersey. But he's not even wearing eight for the Stormers at the minute. He's a bit of a penalty machine. A, a big physical specimen. Looks so good. And, he, and he's only young still. So he's got a long way to go. But am I right in saying Evan Ruiz seems to be dropping down the pecking order? Or is he ready to, to make a big statement? Um, love the look of Venta. Um, Ruan Venter for the Lions talk about balls and muscle in a Quagga Smith style he uh, yeah he looks violent in a, in, in a great way so he's only 21 as well uh, Mpilo Gumid or Gameda well, I'm sorry about the pronunciation I apologise uh, he was on the bench for the Bulls rangy a runner line out forward um, yeah he looks good the Bulls have got some talent though what was the Bulls back row at the weekend it was it was Van Staden Elric Lowe, who's the next guy, he's got a couple of caps to his name, 24 years of age. Um, he was wearing seven at the weekend for the Bulls. And Cameron Hanacom. And again, much like Jan Hendrik Vessels, seems to have the, the highest ceiling of all the players at hooker. For me, from what I've seen, Cameron Hanacom seems to have the highest ceiling out of these back row players that are new faces to the squad. Is that correct? Is, is this guy... Cameron Hanacom, he's E the heir to Dwayne Vermeulen's throne at number eight. Feels that way to me. Tell me what you think in the comments. And just a reminder of the players that are in the back row and not currently uh, in the alignment squad. Three guys playing outside. Uh, Sia Khaleesi in France and Peter Steff Toy in Japan. Jasper Vita as well. Um, not available for selection currently in this squad. Uh, Dion Ferry would have been available but hasn't been picked. You can understand that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him getting a call at some point again. You never know. But what a story he's already given us. And that is the halfway point with the forwards done and dusted. If you get value from the channel, if you appreciate it, give the thumbs up on a video. It helps spread the word. Hit subscribe and give me your comments. And let, let me just briefly tell you about the trip I'm having. I'm going to be taking this Egg Chasers channel on the road with me in the air and back down again in South Africa. I've never been to South Africa before and I cannot wait to be there for the two test matches between South Africa and Ireland. Uh, those test matches happening in Pretoria. So I will be at Loftus Versfeld. I'll be there for the, the, the 90s hip hop that the DJ plays and I cannot wait. I've heard about how good the atmosphere is uh, for that first Ireland test. Then I'll head down to Durban, down to the coast, to Kings Park and watch the second test there. I should have mentioned actually, before I get to Pretoria, I'm gonna spend a few days at Craven Week because um, I, was, I was absolutely buzzing um, when I saw that Craven Week this year the school's championship in South Africa, if you're not familiar, where many great names really announced themselves. Uh, the, the, the best school's championship probably in the world. And I can't wait to see the Western province team uh, play, who've won it for goodness knows how many years. 
And yeah, that's just up the road from Johannesburg in Krugersdorp. So I'll be landing, heading there for the final three days of that. So if you're going to Craven Week, make sure you come and say hello. I'll be taking egg chasers on the road there and then to the test matches between South Africa and Ireland. And I cannot wait. And then later in the year, I'll be there for South Africa versus New Zealand. Rematch of the World Cup, the, the greatest rivalry in rugby. I've never seen... Um, well, I've never seen a game in South Africa. I really wanted to see this one. And, and the first test in Johannesburg uh, and then the second test in Cape Town. I, I'm, I've, I've, I think I might have persuaded a couple of mates to, to join me on the Cape Town leg of my trips. Generally speaking, though, I'm travelling solo. So any local knowledge, any thoughts, um, anyone you think might be able to help me, uh, contact eggchasers at gmail.com is my email address. Contact eggchasers at gmail.com. Back to the South Africa squad then. My goodness me, they've got some talent. Scrum off. Uh, Fafta Klerk playing in Japan, currently injured, rehabilitating in South Africa. Hence, he will be able to go along to the camp along with Grant Williams, Jaden Hendricks, uh, and new face Sonelli Noamba, who actually played fly half uh, at the weekend. So they have got players that can, you know, play in multiple positions again. And uh, for the Lions, a nine that can play 10. So a little bit in the French petit general mode. He's, he's little and rapid, which is just what South Africa seemed to have plenty of when you look at the profile of those scrum halves. Speed is what they have a lot of. Uh, moving to fly half then. Oh, Kobus Reinach, not available, playing in France currently. Uh, fly half, Marnie Leboc, still only 26. He's got a lot of gas in the tank. Jordan Hendricks uh, at the Lions. Uh, he was on the bench for them at the weekend. Sevens international, young guy. I think he's, what, 21, 22? Looks a good player. The one I'm really excited about longer term is Sasha Feinberg. Ngomazolo, Ngomazulu, so I beg your pardon. He was playing 12 at the weekend for the Stormers, can play fly half, tall guy, 6 foot 1, 21 years of age. He looks an absolute baller. Don't forget though about Andre Pollard, the clutch king, playing at Leicester Tigers uh, here in England at the minute. I'm lucky enough to watch him week in, week out, and he is absolutely world class. Centres, Lacan Yoam playing for the Sharks. Jesse Creel recovering from injury over from his uh, J Japanese. Uh, club so he's he'll join the club Kanan Moody I've got down as a centre but he's playing most of his rugby for the Bulls on the wing so I wonder how South Africa will use him but in terms of centres <clears throat> if they do need someone to fill that void in the uh, months and years ahead Henko van Veek looks an absolute boy at that 12 jersey he looks like he could take the mantle from it when and if Damien Dialende and Andre Esterhazen's powers start to wane and Suleiman Hartzenberg was wearing 13 at the weekend for the Stormers, again, looks very, very good indeed. I think he's played for South Africa A before now, but not not, not for the Springboks yet. Uh, again, ridiculous talents. And there's the two guys. Uh, um, Andre Esterhazen, rumoured to be going back to the Sharks along with Trevor Diakane. That's the word on the street. And, I mean, I didn't think he would leave Harlequins. They're paying him a fortune. He deserves every single penny. So they're going to have to open the checkbook. But maybe a bigger picture thing for Andre Esterhazen is if he wants to make it to the next World Cup, being able to be within the system and have his game time managed could be massive. And in terms of outside backs then, uh, you've got Damian Villemza, 25 and two World Cups to his name. He's a freak. Uh, Vili LaRue still around there. Kurt Lee Arendt, uh, Makazoli Mapimpi, and then two new faces. Mornay Vandenberg, who was actually playing scrum half for the Lions, but can play in the back three. So again, it's, it's quite fluid in many cases where players play. Uh, Vandenberg looks uh, a real explosive talent. And Quan Horn, who was the fullback for the Lions at the weekend. And again, fairly small in stature, total fast twitch, absolutely rapid. They look like a good couple of additions to a pretty handy outside back option, which of course will include, when it comes to it, Cheslin Colby. In terms of players that haven't made the cut for this 43-man squad, there was a bunch of options. And I'm not even talking about guys like... Um, like Joseph Dweber, for example, who who has been overlooked in the hooker position. Um, I, I'm talking about. I, I was thinking of what are the young guys that haven't made the cut this time that have been playing really well and might have might have might be sat there quite disappointed that they haven't made the cut. And the two that I've picked, I just picked one forward and one back. And tell me what you think. Uh, Hakjiva Deamani playing number eight for the Stormers, and he's having a great season. I think a lot of people were surprised not to see his name on the on the list of loose forwards. And David Creel uh, for the Bulls. 
particularly because South Africa seem to have a lot of players in the, but certainly in the um, in the alignment camp, they seem to have a lot of players in the centre that play thirteen, not many that play twelve. So I was maybe thinking David Creel would get the nod there because he looks a very very handy inside centre. But that again, this just goes to highlight the ridiculous depth of talent in South African rugby. They've got great players not involved in their alignment camp. Uh, they've got loads of players that aren't involved because they're playing elsewhere in the world. And they've got so many players that are, well, filling up other international teams after being naturalised. So um, it's quite something. Can't wait to get out there. Can't wait to see how South Africa go in 2024. We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. See you on the next one.